Once again, this is NSB Wire saying hello to all of you YouTubers out there as well as to the followers of my blog at movingwire.blogspot.com. Today I will be demonstrating how to make a mobile. Unlike this mobile that I have on my finger, today's mobile will be suspended from above. Let's begin. You will need black and yield bailing wire. It's a brand new spool. It's very good to have. It's 16 gauge wire. It's annealed, so it's malleable and it's forgiving. And it's also stiff enough to hold its shape. That's why it's my favorite type of wire to use. You will need end nippers for cutting the wire. Very useful if you don't have a pair and you plan on doing any amount of wire sculpting, I highly recommend having them on hand. Needle nose pliers, they're very good for detail work and making circles and loops and things and so will be very handy for using when we make the swivel or the swivels for the mobile today. Also, lineman's pliers. Very good to have around. My favorite pliers, as a matter of fact, are these lineman's pliers because they allow you to have a lot of leverage on the wire. And the back here has teeth so you can really crimp down the wire when you need to, which is a good thing. Have a pair, keep them on hand. Okay, so this new roll of baling wire, so we will undo the little wire holding it, leave this on because this wire likes to uncoil itself very quickly, especially on a brand new roll. So we will give ourselves about six inches and then you're going to tie off the wire here and cut your six inches of wire off of the spool. Now, you'll need your needle nose pliers and you are going to make a loop. And this loop will serve to allow the bottom half of the swivel to go around in circles without hanging up on anything. It's very important that you have this large enough for the 16 gauge wire to spin around freely in, but small enough that it won't fall through when you make the nail head, as I show you as I'll soon show you. So now that you have your loop, you'll take it and you'll make a number nine. It's backwards in my thing because I'm using my uh, web camera, but you're gonna make a number nine facing you and you're going to place your pliers here like so and you're going to bend up. See how there's a wire or a plier's nose width there? That's going to allow the nail head to spin freely and you want it to have enough space to do so. Okay. So now that you've gotten there, we're going to grab maybe about 3 quarters of an inch up. and you're going to bend it down so you have most of a triangle. Now you see how this part is coming off the bottom here? This part is going to go over the top and that'll give it a, some continuity of form. Okay. 
Now I'll take my end nippers. Add an angle here. And snip off the wire. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit more. You can really use your hand for this, but you're going to make your triangle with the hole in the bottom. Okay? Now we'll make the other part, the nail, as I call it. You're going to have about an inch of wire off to the side of your pair of pliers. You're going to bend this down at a 90 degree angle. Now you're going to take your lineman's pliers and you're going to grab the wire so that the wire is just in the very tip and you're going to need this part in the middle of the nose because if you have it off to the side of the nose when you go to bend it down it'll just spin in the plier and it won't actually bend so it's very important that you keep it right like that and you're gonna put a lot of pressure on it with your right hand and then you're gonna push down And as you can see, it has a bend to it. Now you're going to continue that bend. You're going to hold this here. And you're going to push. And then you're going to put the wire in these teeth. And I like this pair of pliers because it has big teeth. And it really allows you to grab onto the wire where you need to, to shape it. and get it to go where you want it to go. See how we have it looped over on itself now? Before we go any further, check it. See how it's off kilter? You're going to want to bend that down slightly so that it's at a 90 degree angle no matter which way you look at it. 90 degree angle. Okay. Now you're going to grab it in the teeth, like so. And you're going to bend it the rest of the way around, crimping as you go. Until you have a little circle on top that serves as your nail head. Now, again, I clip it off at an angle because I like the way it looks. Pardon me, I had an ash on my head. So, now you're left with this. And a little wire piece. And as you can see, it spins freely in the little thing that you've made. And I'm actually going to straighten this out right quick because it's a little crooked. But now you can see that you've got most of your swivel made. And it spins. Now you need to make the part that will attach to your mobile. Grab with your pair of pliers, needle noses, and you're going to grab just at the base towards the swivel, leaving yourself about three quarters to a half, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. And then you're going to push it over to one side, like so. Naturally. 
I'm going to cut it down to a half an inch. And then I'm going to take my finger and put it in the little elbow that I just made. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to bend it into another loop. accidentally made the loop at an angle, so I'll straighten it out. Get a little bit more of a bend. Pinch it. And there you have it. A completed swivel. And you didn't even have to go to the store to buy one. I like it to be a little more symmetrical on the eye hook portion. So I'll take my other pair of needle nose. This is where these come in handy to have two pairs. Hold it in my left hand and manipulate it with my right hand. If you're left handed, just reverse the operation. So now you have your swivel. All right. So I went ahead and made two more little swivels. So I have one, two, three in total now. And we will be having three limbs on the mobile. So now we're going to go ahead and make the body of the mobile. I'm going to spool off about eight inches of wire. So, and I noticed that I did not remove this this time. Sometimes it, there will be a little tail sticking down towards the center, and that will impede that, and then you would need to take off the keeper wire. But in this case, I'm just going to spin it and spool off about eight inches, about that much. You can really use as much as you want, but 8 inches is good for this demonstration. Now, you're going to take this piece, and you're going to straighten it satisfactorily straight. You don't have to be perfect with it at this point. So now you have an 8 inch piece of wire. For the next piece of wire, you're going to give yourself about four inches longer than that first eight inch piece. So we'll have a foot long piece of wire. Cut it about here. Okay. Now for a third piece of wire, I'm going to do about 16 inches. So I'm going to add four to this. So I'll cut it about where my fingers are here. Okay. Now we have our three pieces of wire for the body. Go ahead and straighten it out with your fingers. Or sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab with my pliers on one end and I'll grab the other end with my other pair of pliers, thusly, 
and I'll squeeze real tight with both, and I'll pull. And that generally will get most of the kinks out, but, I mean, you can make it as straight as you want or as crooked as you want, so doesn't really matter, it's your mobile. In this case, I'm going to leave it a little kinky, but... I'm going to make a balance point. And it's up to you where you want your balance point to be. I'll start with the longest piece of wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it roughly into thirds with my fingers. Okay? And about where my thumb is. I'm going to bend upwards. And then I'll bend downwards. And I'll bend back outwards like that. So that I have a definite balance point here. Okay. And then I like spirals, so I'm going to take this and here and work it. into a spiral. With my needle nose pliers. Make a good size little spiral. Now on the other side, I'm going to make a spiral. Only instead of being upwards like this spiral, I'm going to make this one point downwards. I'll just twist it around. Do -do -do. And you can make a round spiral, you can make a square spiral, or you can just kind of have a hook hanging out on the end. I just feel that a spiral just gives it a little bit more of a pizzazz, you know. Just a little more character with a spiral than just having like just a hook on the end. So we have our first part made. Actually, I'm going to undo it a little bit. Here. And I have two spirals. One up, one down. A heel and a toe. We'll do the same with this piece. And then we'll go on to the smaller piece and do the same to it. As you can see, I now have my three limbs all made, all identical, one, two, and three. They all have the heel toe look to them, and now it's time to attach the swivels. So I found the swivel with the tallest and largest triangle, and I'm going to use that one on the top, and you just thread it on the end, thread it through the eye loop on the bottom of the swivel, thread it up, 
and take it all the way up to the little balance point that you made on the limb. Now you're going to repeat the process with the next two. Thread it on there up to the balance point. As you can see they're all heavier on the long side than on the short side. More material there. And then on the smallest one takes a little playing with sometimes. But now you have all three. The next step is attaching them together. Just for show. Just to see about where you are. Hook them on the small, on the short piece. So, swivel. Swivel, swivel. So all of the short limbs are connected. And as you can see, this one, rather than hanging downwards like it was, is now pointing upwards because it has the weight of these two hanging on it. The most important thing is to get the bottom one balanced first, then work your way. Just climb the ladder up through your mobile. And whether it has three or a hundred and three, always start with the bottom, then the next, then the next, then the next. Until you're finished. The top always gets balanced last. So, to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to remove the two here, so we're back to individual pieces, okay, and we're going to balance the bottom one first, and we're going to make some weights for it, and I have a piece of wire cut that is about the same length as this was originally actually just a little bit longer and if I make a little J bend in the end of it make just a little hook for demonstrational purposes and I hang it on this side you can see that the long end sticks straight out. So, we will be using this piece here for this side. And actually, I might choose a longer piece just to give it that extra bit of weight because I'm going to also be putting a weight on this side. I got myself a longer piece. We'll set that one down. That one can still be used. I don't believe in wasting wire. I always try and find uses for the pieces that I have left over. The lion piece, all those main pieces that I threaded up through the spiral on the lion were actually excess pieces that I had left over from other projects, namely the board track racer. We'll use this one. So, we will. I was thinking of a musical theme, but I'll just stick with the spirals just for grins. We'll just make it a very 
playful, give it sort of a wrought iron look with all the spiral. And you can reverse the spiral, make it like a snail shell. You know? Give it sort of a beef motif. Maybe we'll even make it a snail. We'll make it into a snail. Because we can. So we have our little shell there. Now we'll work on the snail himself, or herself, him herself, actually, because snails are hermaphroditic. So we have our snail and his, her little head. And we'll make some eye stalks. And it's your mobile, so you can make it however you want. You can have a snail, or you could have birds, or whatever sort of shapes you want to make. It doesn't really matter. You could do a purely geometric design, you know. But I like the little snail. So I'm going to... And I'll give him a little bit of a 3D element and poke the shell out to one side a little bit so he's not just flat not just a two-dimensional snail and the nice thing about wire is it's all about suggested forms it's all about suggestion so you don't have to be perfect it's like sketching honestly sketching and wire sculpture are very similar to one another in that they use lines to suggest forms rather than actually emulating every single form of it. We'll just kind of give him another eye stock here. Yeah, somebody poked him in the eye. I'm going to make this one shorter. This one will be shorter than the last eye stock. Some little kid was playing with him and poked his eyeball. Okay. Now that we have our little snail, I'll add, or I'll just kind of follow this shell, follow the arc of this shell with the wire now. Use my pliers to hold it together. Just sort of follow it, you know, so it's not too blatantly obvious that there's two pieces of wire there. Put a little hook on it. And I'll make another little spiral just just for just for friends. I like spirals. I know I've said that before. Then we'll hook one on the other. Now we have a little snail. And it spins around on the swivel. Okay. Now we'll make a weight for this side. We'll just make a little one. Or use a little piece of wire. Because we don't need a whole lot of weight, we'll just make a very small little snail. This will be a quick snail. And I'll start with the hook. Just a little loop. And 
give him one little antenna. And kind of wrap him in a spiral. Grab my other pair of needle nose pliers. Again, detail work is, or it's helpful when you have small work to do to use a little, or to use two pliers at once because it just gives you, it's easier than using your big old fingers to try and make small manipulations with the wire. It's also easier on your fingers, you're less likely to get blisters. And then a little snail. Or a snake, maybe. Maybe an earthworm. Kind of wormy look to it, you know. So, we have our bottom one. And we'll just sort of... Oh. I made this spiral too tight on the bottom one, so I'll undo the little hook there. I'll just get right on in. Just like so. Hook the little wormy right through. Okay. Now we have a little worm dangling out on the end. Little red worm. And his snail counterpart. Oops. Snail counterpart. So we have the bottom one balanced. Now, we're going to hook it on to the second one. It's hanging down now. But now, it's pointing skywards. So we're going to need a little bit more weight on this one than we had on the previous one. So we will grab ourselves a nice size piece of wire. That wire piece is actually a little heavier than it needs to be. And you can tell that because it sags below parallel and that piece of wire is on there. So we'll actually cut this piece down ever so slightly. I'm going to hang this somewhere. Now I'll just lay it down. So, next weight. Who likes fish? I like fish. We'll make a fishy. Make his little gill. There's eyeball. And his little gill there. And then his mouth. This is a very rough fish, as you can probably tell. I'm not really trying to keep too much of a continuity, or not trying to keep much continuity in theme. We'll make it a uh, sunfish. Because they're kind of weird looking fish. They have the sort of tail that goes straight into the body. They look kind of like a bullet. I 
how their tail goes into the body. And then we'll put a little dorsal fin on them. These nippers. Just snip that right off. Like we said, it was a little bit on the heavy side, so we'll remove just a little bit of wire. Now we have our fish. Okay. For the weight here. Okay. Now we have two parts of it done. Now it's time for the big kahuna, the top branch to our mobile. Look how high it's pointing skywards. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> so, we really need some weight on this piece here. So, It is pretty much the sum of the weights of all the other bits and pieces that we've put on there that we'll need most likely. So I have two pieces of wire here that I previously cut for earlier takes on this video. See that? Look at that. Even with the two pieces of wire, it's, it's still barely making a dent. We'll need three of these pieces of wire. Three pieces of wire, and we'll see what that does. Three pieces of wire is almost too much, but yeah. So we'll do, I'll just cut off the end of the long piece, and it should be plenty. Let's do something cool. Let's do let's make an octopus. Kind of have a fishy theme going on, so why not? I know three pieces of wire is maybe a hexapus. <laughs> But, we still have the general idea. So, I'll pull one of the pieces a little bit longer than the other two. Okay, so I'm putting the finishing touches on the Portuguese Man of War that I decided to make with those three pieces of wire. Didn't want to bore you while I decided in my indecisive manner on what precisely to make with the three pieces of wire. Give it 
little tentacles, some life. Squiggles and life are very, you know, just kind of random touches of the wire until you get it just right. And there's the Portuguese man of war for the final weight on our mobile, or on my mobile. Your mobile may look completely different. And you can have the point of balance at any position on the um, on the thing. And actually, this could do to lose a little weight. So I'm actually going to trim down one of his tentacles. Here by a little. And of course my Mac has the magnetic, the mag safe or whatever the hell they call the proprietary piece of junk. And now the mobile is complete. And I'll move out of the way and show you. Now that you've finished balancing your mobile with the objects that you created, you should display it in a prominent location in your house, apartment, dorm room, or otherwise, and allow people to marvel at the thing that you have created with a little bit of bailing wire, a little bit of time, and a lot of imagination. Sculpting wire does not have to be hard but it is time consuming and does require a bit of patience, a bit of practice, and a desire to learn more. The desire to learn new things is what really drives me in my sculpture because I'm always looking for new ways to apply things. For example, I may very well be using this design in future because it reminded me of the phylogenies I did in zoology class. And as much as making this sculpture and tutorial inspired me, I hope it inspires you just the same. And there will be many more tutorials in the coming months and years, and I certainly hope to see you then, and until then, happy bending, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.